Hey, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. This is Mike Doloff, your, your host and presenter. Glad to have you on. Thanks for spending um, 30 minutes or less of your day with me. Hopefully, you'll find some good insights about using Teams as your PBX today. I'm going to go through it very light on um, kind of the meat, or very light on slides. So the meat is kind of on like two or three slides. We'll get to it in just a second. But a couple housekeeping things. This will be recorded. Um, if you've got anyone you want to send it to, just reach out for a uh, recording. We'll get it to you. Got a couple upcoming uh, webinars you can see here noted, a couple of Genesis Cloud, some Mytel ones. Um, and then as always, just feel free to ask questions as we go along. I'll, I'll be monitor, monitoring and looking for questions. I've got a slide at the end where we can pause if there's any that you've been too shy to ask up until that point, but don't be a stranger, ask away. Um, the more questions engagement, the I bet if you've got a question, someone else probably is curious about that same thing. So ask away. Let's jump in. I um, always want to give, I always have guests on here, give a little context to who Inflow is, so you get a sense of our, our perspective on Teams, where is it coming from? Well, we really work in the UC and contact center space, and um, have about 70 employees work with companies nationwide, um, and really kind of the UC contact center um, technology space is a space we, we work in. So um, let me show you a couple customers we work with. We work with great organizations, and these are conversations around Teams we're having with many of these types of companies helping them on kind of understanding their options, getting feedback from them of what they're doing, what, what's working, what's not working. And then of course we have relationships with, um, you know, Microsoft uh, as well as all the kind of core players in the UCAS space. And so bringing all that to bear to give you a sense of, here's what we see going on with Teams, here are the options, here's what people are gravitating towards, et cetera. Um, so this is just, uh, we're gonna be focusing of course a little bit on, uh, a lot on Teams today but um, we'll talk about some of the other UCAS players because one of the options with Teams is playing nicely with other UCAS players and what that mean and what that look like. And we work with you know, all the main players in this um, unified communications as a service space. So let's jump in. Using te Microsoft Teams as your PBX. So I'm framing this up uh, in, in really three slides. And so there's kind of like, the first part is helping companies do some self-assessment on like, is Teams gonna work for, for you as your voice communications platform, right? So of course, in most cases, people are already using Teams. You're probably already using it for, you know, meetings, messaging, collaboration, maybe internal peer-to-peer -peer, um, calling. But if you haven't lit it up as the, the phone with the phone license, then you're wondering, should we, or how, how should we? Um, there's some other questions you wanna, you wanna ask yourself as well as an organization. And one of the first ones is, is what's the level of reporting needs that you have? Uh, and a lot of these are um, question, good questions to ask in general if you're looking at UCAS, but some of these are areas where Teams has some deficiencies or we've noted clients that um, were sort of disappointed by the level of effort here or the level of capabilities here with Teams. Um, so reporting is one of these areas where um, I was talking about this on a webinar last week, but in, within the Unified Communications as a Service space, the, the reporting and analytics um, spectrum is very wide for what the capabilities are. And I would say for what the, the needs are for, some clients have zero interest or, or, or requirements around reporting. Other organizations are trying to get as much data as they can out of internal converse, conversations, communications, phone calls. Um, and so take a look at that. What are your requirements there? Will Teams reporting meet the needs? Um, how important are integrations to third-party systems? This is again, um, the broader conversation we're seeing around UC is is it's not it's more of a platform right it's integrated with lots of different things now right besides just sort of your calendar it's integrated with other platforms and tools um, and does teams have do you are you using something that's not doesn't have a native integration to teams or doesn't have the ability to be integrated with teams right those are one of those questions you just want to ask yourself Microsoft um, uh, love them or hate them, right? They have the ability to be more more tightly controlling of their APIs, and so they don't they don't have sort of the free access, uh, you know, granted, or the level of API access maybe that some players do because they don't have to. They're kind of the big the the big person on campus. Um, so for some companies, that poses a, a challenge for integrations that they want to accomplish. Um, a couple of the areas that, and again, uh, Teams is moving and changing, and I don't know if any of you saw, but um, the CEO's recent announcement for their quarterly was, I think it's 125 million um, uh, active daily users, I think it was, something like that. Just a massive statistic, right? So the growth of, of Teams has been phenomenal over the last 12, 18 months. 
uh, and continue so. And so obviously feature functionality follows suit, but some of the areas we've seen some deficiencies that, and that in my last look um, on Teams in the last couple of weeks, I didn't see some of these, but operator console. So some orgs are used to having a really nice kind of um, heads up display of being able to have people, hey, maybe a lot of our main calls come in and we need somebody to be able to drag and drop, move calls quickly. Um, that's an area where some orgs, that there, there can be a deficiency here. SMS, this has been kind of an odd one for me, why Teams hasn't um, incorporated SMS into. Um, but I would say the UCAS landscape as a whole, SMS is sort of table stakes for everybody. Teams, um, to my knowledge, in, in the mo most recent weeks, doesn't have that just yet. It's still come a roadmap item. So if you were like, hey, we want our ability for our, our numbers to be you know, textable, we receive those communications. Um, that's something that's a gap right now. And again, if anyone has updated knowledge of that, that's different. We, we use Teams internally and testing it and checking it all the time. But if I missed any of those, please um, correct me. And then faxing. Faxing, everybody everyone we talk to is always embarrassed about, hey, our company still faxes. But the reality is lots of companies still fax. It's still part of business processes. Um, and that's something that's a gap in Teams today. So those are areas where just looking at not, I would, you know, I'd say more fringe use cases than, than mainstream, um, but important to note if you have uses around those and needs around those, just to know there might be some gaps or need for kind of third party augmentation to accomplish some of those. Um, call flow simplicity or complexity, however you want to look at it, is another interesting thing to consider. Um, um, just this is a very subjective one. But it is interesting to note how are things going? How are call flows set up today? Is that something that can be accomplished easily and scalable on the team side? Same thing for administering. Is this a big deal and not a big deal? Um, is there benefits or drawbacks to having teams be the place where we're administering from a UC perspective building call flow, right? Getting in there, getting your hands dirty with what the capabilities and limitations are. The reality is there's always limitations. Every, every system has its warts, right? Um, and so what are those and understanding those? Uh, the last one though, this is kind of a catch-all, but this is actually a really important one. I'd say a lot of people um, don't think of this one. And this is, this is where we have some really interesting discussions with clients. You know, will Microsoft support meet expectations and needs and stability levels, right? So how accessible are they for getting support? Um, it's one thing when it's meetings and messaging, it's when it's phone and your main number is coming into that. Do you have comfort or hesitation around being able to get Microsoft to address any needs that might crop up around, you know, system stability, number porting, call flow, these types of things, right? And um, and also from an uptime perspective, right? Is it does it have uptime and published SLAs and, and metrics that you're comfortable with? Those are all questions that um, you know. Companies need to be able to answer for themselves. Of course, there's going to be different different approaches for different orgs, but it's a really an important point to think through that um, piece as well. A lot of uh, a lot of organizations, you know, are um, you know, communication still on phone, voice communications is still like a really mission critical part of the the business and operations. And so there's some we've seen some hesitancy around around this particular piece for certain organizations and certain types of organizations. So those are some of the kind of preliminary help you help you understand like okay what what are some of the questions what are some of the parts we need to vet out within teams to understand um, if it can work for our as our PBX or or go in eyes wide open if we think it can but here are some of the gaps right so once you have that that um, sort of frame of reference which is uh, again something we we certainly encourage and help companies walk through but then I'd say the second piece is, okay, what are my options now? Let's say I determine, yeah, Teams Teams feels right for us. It seems like it checks the boxes nicely. So two high-level choices you can make now. One is, and this is sort of option 1A and 1B on this slide, and then I'll hit 2A, 2B on the next slide. The first one, though, is we say, hey, look, we're going all in with Microsoft Teams. It's going to become our PBX, right? Voice is going to run through that. Okay, so what are my choices here? Well, you need the Microsoft phone license. So if you don't have, you know, your E5 license today, you can a la carte add the, the Microsoft phone license. Once you have that, right, that exposes the dial pad on the Teams client. And now you have the choice of, um, now, you need, now you need dial tone itself. So now you've got the button lit up on the phone uh, or on the client. And now what's my dial tone? What's my dial tone? How am I bringing that in? You have two choices. You can buy Microsoft's dial plan. Um, we've seen this be, of kind of cost comparison analysis for a lot of companies is 
um, it's fine. It's kind of the default setting. Most people that light this up go, hey, yeah, let's do it. it looks like I just buy a dial plan, check the boxes, and, and put in my order, and away we go. Um, we've seen it be more costly than it needs to be for a lot of organizations. Um, it's just not – you can save more money. Um, and then you can also get better visibility and better control. And so that's where option B, we, if, if, you know, if we have our druthers, we'd guide somebody to say, hey, if you're going to use Teams as your PBX, it's great. Microsoft doesn't need to be your dial tone provider. There's a whole ecosystem of great direct routing partners that will give you better cost, um, better pricing, really, on your dial tone and usage, um, but also better, better control over that as well. So if you need to forward a number or do things, you've got a good, a good responsive company, hopefully, to work with on that and support you as well uh, and give you better visibility into um, things like QoS. And if you're having to troubleshoot uh, issues, you can get in and understand at the carrier level what's going on with them from your uh, technical administrative side. So option two, 1B is sort of like the, the path we guide people on. And these are companies like Next Vortex is a great SIP provider. We work with Microsoft Direct Routing, IntelliPeer, OneStream, NTT. There's great, great partners we work with out that, that we can help pair customers with to to evaluate what's going to be the best you know and it, it's going to depend based on are you domestic us are you international um you know there's a bunch of different things we look at based on recommendations we make for customers but in general um this is a really solid path and we've we've helped companies move from kind of the direct microsoft style plan to direct a routing partner and save costs so some of it's just that save save costs make you know have better control vis visibility but if you're going kind of from scratch, this is the path I would typically look towards. There's really no downside. There's just some upside. Um, so that's kind of option one. And that's, again, Teams is now full on. And you have the option of Microsoft basically providing the dial tone or one of the direct routing partners providing the dial tone, right? And, and that, that latter option we think is a good play for most orgs. The other, I'll, t I'll give you a couple other scenarios where having um, a dial tone provider outside of Microsoft has been helpful too. Um, from a DR BCP perspective, um, you've got more control over that, right? So if there's an issue with Teams from the phone perspective, do you want to be able to control and route those calls elsewhere? Maybe you have a backup call center. Maybe you have a different call center solution, right? Because Teams isn't a call center product. So uh, if Teams is down, it's not impacting maybe your contact center calls because you've got a different dial tone provider. So there's a lot of kind of flexibility pieces in there that Maybe, may, you know, in a perfect world where there's no issues and uptimes 100%, they are not benefits, but the reality is that's not the world we live in. And so some of those things become important uh, for DRBCP conversations. Let me pause here. I, know, I think it looks like I got a question to see if this is a good one to answer now. Uh, Phil, good question. I'm actually going to hit that, hit that next. Um, so this is kind of, if you want to use Teams, as your PBX, if you're making call flow changes, you're in Teams, you're administering it in there. So that's option one. I would say an equally popular option that a lot of people explore and land on is, so we really like using Teams um, for our end users. It's out there, everyone's using it, but we're not quite sure Teams is the right solution for our actual um, PBX needs. And so this is where we see a lot of popularity. Phil, I think this is, um, this is where your question is asking, which is pairing basically Teams with another UCAS solution. So what's that mean? Well, um, you've got Teams out there on on your on your end user. It's deployed out there. Everyone's using it. That's great. Um, you've got two options of pairing Teams with other UCAS providers. Option one, uh, option one in this is, or, or two A rather, if you're looking at all the options on the table here, two A right. Your end users are operating exclusively within the Teams client. And you basically turn up another UCAS solution. Let's take Ring Central or Zoom, eight by eight, Mitel. Almost everyone out there in the UCAS space has a nice integration with Teams. You're using Teams on your end user side as the client, and it's registering as a SIP endpoint to your UCAS solution. So your end user sees the solution as, "Hey, cool, I'm using Teams, and now I have the ability to dial out of it." While on the back end, call flow. Dial tone is all being provided from that UCAS provider. Again, Ring Central, 8, Zoom, et cetera. Um, so the, the, you have to buy the Microsoft phone license, right, in order to do that. So you have to have the dial pad exposed on your team client. So that's one of the things that um, people either like or don't like. That's a Microsoft requirement, of course. 
Um, the nice part though is your users are living inside of Teams, just like they have always been, and now they're using Teams Voice, but on the back end, it's really being powered by another UCAS provider. And so why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you're not comfortable with some of the things that we went through on that first slide. Maybe reporting doesn't meet its needs. Maybe call flow, maybe the uptime, maybe the support capabilities. Lots of reasons why customers are saying, well, I like I like Teams for end users, but I'm not quite comfortable that, that it's going to be on my full-on PBX by itself. Um, so that's an option right there. Uh, that's kind of the core one from this, but I'd say there's a subset of an option here. Um, Ring Central does this, and I've got this on the slide here. You can see the screenshot of. There's kind of this option 2B, which is, hey, we want to use Teams, um, but we but we also don't want to have to pay for Microsoft phone license. Um, Ring Central, and I don't know if there's others like this. Ring has this option where you have the ability to um, not buy the Microsoft phone license, but you can see sort of the buttons in your Teams client are different colors, right? Um, the orange ones mean those are coming from Ring Central. So when you click dial, it's actually going to pop up the Ring Central app there. And so you're using effectively two clients, right? So for some organizations, they're like, oh no, we're just using one total, total non starter for us. But for others, they're like, hey, look, we don't have to buy the Microsoft phone license, but we still have a pretty unified feel. Um, Teams is really kind of the central point. And yeah, if we do a phone call, it launches the Ring Central client to do it, but we're still living in one. UI for end users most of the time. We're cool with that. So I'd say that's kind of like a middle a middle option, if you will. Um, you're still using Ring Central as your dial tone provider in that case. Uh, call flow administration is happening on Ring, but your end user is mostly living within, within Teams. Um, so again, like I'm painting this, I, I live and breathe in this all the time. So if this is confusing to anybody, um, raise your hand and, and ask questions because it's kind of it's certainly nuanced. Uh, but I would say I would say we're seeing a lot of organizations pick um, kind of option option two here of like we love using teams how do we help pair that with somebody because we're just not quite comfortable to move full on into teams uh, and there's lots of options here and so um, this is this is an area where we spend a lot of time most every UCAS solution out there and I rattled off a lot of them have a, a really strong team story um, uh, and Phil, to your question of of 2A or 2B, um, Zoom has actually been one of the later. What, Zoom has actually been more resistant to integrating with um, Microsoft than a lot of the others. Zoom would live in kind of the 2A option, to my knowledge. Um, I don't know if it's actually released yet. Too, it wasn't as of a couple weeks ago. I need to check current status. But they've been pretty slow at coming out with the the Teams integration. It's the number one thing we've been asking them about for the last year, but they've been kind of uh, a bit slower to the game on that. But Zoom would fit more in 2A. The only one I know definitively that has kind of this 2B option here is Ring Central, where you can get away with having this phone license um, purchase. Uh, I think it's a smart play. It's a, we've got a number of Ring Central clients that are using this particular piece. We've got other ones, though, on Ring Central that are doing kind of 2A, which is Ring Central is really just behind the scenes, and their end users don't even think of Ring Central or know it. It's, it's all happening through Teams, and then it's just the admin and telco that's coming from Ring Central. So there are several kind of nuanced ways you can slice it up. Um, another question here. So Teams with on-premise PBX. So this is a great question. Uh, I didn't cover this. Uh, we had a separate kind of webinar a couple months ago. We went in, in depth with that. Um, the integration points for like kind of option 2A is for, for UCAS, like for cloud PBX, that's like very prevalent, right? Like I said, almost everyone's there. Zoom is one of the latest to that game, and I think they'll be there shortly if they're not, if they haven't launched their Teams integration just yet. Um, from a prem perspective, um, this is Dimitri for your question. From a prem perspective, there are some very limited capabilities for, um, or, or I should say solutions for 2A where you can do that with, where basically can register a Teams client to a premises PBX as a SIP endpoint. Um, Mitel on their Heritage product has the ability to do it, and I don't have the product name. It's not, if you're familiar with the Shortel Mitel, it's not that system. You don't have the ability to register Teams to Shortel Mitel system, unfortunately. I've been asked that a lot from a lot of our customers because we have a lot of customers on that product. You do on one particular Mitel product. I don't have the name off the top of my head, but you have that capability. I understand as well that there is, um, and again, Avaya has lots of different products, but my understanding is there's an ability to do that on, uh, on one of the Avaya products as well. Uh, and it gets very nuanced. So the answer to your question, Dimitri, is maybe. Maybe can do it that way. 
that's that would be the preferred way, right? In my opinion, your end users are like, hey, we're using Teams now and we're pushing calls through on the back end that's happening through your PBX. So can it happen with the prem system? It can in, in limited use cases um, with certain specific products, but it's not like, it's not as widely common as it is with UCAS, I would say. Now there are other types of integration with premise systems as well, which is, um, I don't have a good diagram here, so I'll just sort of describe it. But um, you have the ability, of course, to, to integrate teams with with a premise system if you wanted to leverage dial tone from like a, a Cisco or a Mitel or Navaya system as well. You would do that by leveraging, uh, having an SBC that you could integrate um, between your prem system and your uh, team system. So you could basically have calls traverse between those platforms. And so you could publish a number, it could be dialed, uh, and that would run through your Mitel Cisco prem system. Um, but be integrated to be able to connect with with teams. So there are some capabilities there. Uh, Demetra, I'd say it's not, the use cases are fairly narrow and we don't see a ton of adoption around that because it's it's not, it's not um, I would say unless it's a really, really large enterprise with very, you know, massive infrastructure investments, it's probably not gonna be something that would be interesting for most companies to look at. And then Daniel, I think I answered your question, but um, an on-prem Mitel Connect integration Unfortunately, we've been pushing Mitel for this. Um, they don't have the ability to do sort of option 2A or 2B on the prem system. Um, Mitel has the option of doing 2A if you move to Mitel Cloud, but that's not your question. So that's those are the, the options on um, Mitel Connect are really um, tie line integration for, for some pretty light use cases, but there's not really a good way to bridge those two. Unfortunately, you're kind of operating in two different worlds. Teams client and your UC client in that case. Okay. Um, I'll pause here and make sure I got through. I think I got through a lot of the questions. I just want to check and see if there was any I didn't answer. If anyone has follow up on any of those, please uh, message in there and let me know. Uh, so let me give a quick recap, right? Option one Teams is your PBX, and then you go Microsoft licensing, phone license, and then you buy dial tone from them or you buy dial tone from a separate direct routing partner. Um, option 1B is definitely a good choice there to explore. I've not seen a compelling reason why option 1A, the only compelling reason I've heard is, yeah, but I could have all of it come from Microsoft and it's true. Um, that's true. You have a separate, you could have a one invoice then I guess. Um, that's the only compelling reason I've seen, but but I think the, the pros of the other option 1, 1B outweigh the cons of uh, having two invoices in my opinion. And then 2A and 2B, we touched on, we spent quite a bit of time on this, but um, this is, you know, teams paired with a specifically UCAS partner um, in two different ways. And the the one reason where you'd say, well, why don't people just for option two, why doesn't everybody do 2A? It seems to make the most sense, right? Your, your end users are in one client. That makes, that seems like that'd be the best world. A absolutely. Don't disagree at all. It requires a phone license from Microsoft, and that's a, that can be a showstopper for people. Um, and I remember the license, maybe $9 per user per month, something like that. And so some people look at that and say, hey, that's nice, but that's a big cost if I multiply that over the year. So that's really the only reason why 2A wouldn't be the, the go-to for a lot of companies that want to go option two. So it looks like I covered most of the questions that have gotten asked so far. So. Um, we'll skip through this unless there's any other burning hot questions now. I know that we covered that really quickly and there's a ton of nuance in this topic. If there's any last questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I would say if you have everyone's environment's different um, uh, and somebody asked a question about roadmap for Mitel to leverage option 2B, we're pushing, they've not committed to anything, Steve. We've pushed them on that um, a lot. And um, we just haven't gotten, there, the short answer is no, there's no roadmap. We're not seeing a lot of expansion of of the Prem solutions trying to play nicely with teams, except for the ones I mentioned. There's one specific Mitel product that does, and then I believe one Avaya. Um, we keep pushing on them because we think there's a tremendous opportunity and demand, but there's just not a, there's not a ton of people listening to, to that ask from us right now. Um, so yeah, if you have any specific questions on any of anything in your environment, um, hey, would love to do this. We can definitely drill in. Um, and there's a lot. Of, I didn't expect so many good questions about um, integrating with prem systems. M maybe we should do a separate one to to talk through and nuance what those look like. 
I don't think any of them are really um, amazing, like as great as what we talked about here on the UCAS side, but there's some solid ones in there. So maybe it's a good note for me to do a follow-up to dive deeper in and show you some architecture, what that looks like. A um, couple, couple last questions here before we go. Um, any upper limits on the number of users who can use the options with a Microsoft phone license? Kevin, maybe clarify that one. Number of users who can use the options, Microsoft phone license. Is it? Are you asking about Kevin? Clarify that for me if you're talking about them on the Microsoft side or something else. The 300 user limit. I haven't. I haven't heard that, Kevin. I'll take that offline with you to confirm, but. We haven't seen any. We've got some customers that are using Teams, integr Teams integration or Teams as PBX for thousands of users, um, uh, as well as kind of the option 2, 2A as well, and haven't seen any limitations there. So, um, oh boy, a bunch of good questions here. So give me a second here to sort through a couple of these. I think some of these will be great for the audience to hear other questions. Um, All right. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Steve was talking about, um, oh no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, here, here's another question. If we were to pair Ring Central with Teams and use only the Teams client, do we still administer the phone system through Ring Central? Yes, Phil, good question, and the answer is yes. That, that would be basically option 2B, I'm sorry, 2A, excuse me, 2A or 2B, Ring Central has both of those options. But if you're just using the Teams client, that would be 2A. And yeah, from an administrative standpoint, um, team, Ring Central in that case is your dial tone provider. And um, your numbers reported over there, you're, you're procuring numbers, you're managing numbers, and you're building call flow. Um, it gets into a question of like, um, you know, uh, single sign-on and Active Directory sync and things like that of like how you're building users. But in general, your IT admins are building the call flow, building, you know, users and the functionality within Ring Central and your in and your end users, your end customers from IT perspective, are living in Teams and they know no different, right? It's just what's powering it under the hood. Good question, Phil. Uh, one last question here. I think we've got time for actually. Let's see. Yeah, if you go with option one B, let me go back to that real quick. If you go with option one B in, a, in an Azure SBC, can you build some redundancy so you can prevent any outages such as DR, Dimitri? Yeah, 100%. I, I touched on that briefly, but this is one of the benefits, in my opinion, of of one B, is yeah, you have control now of the numbers and you can point them all other places. One uh, B is also very common if somebody's using a contact center and then uh, a separate contact center solution. So we can have kind of a single dial tone provider, let's say Next Vortex, pointing traffic into Teams pointing traffic into a cloud contact center solution. And now you can control that and you have some DR BCP capabilities in there as well. So um, that's a great question, Dimitri. And yeah, that's one of the, that control element to me is one of the big power, point, power pieces of if, hey, if you're gonna go Teams as your PBX, think of Dialtone differently because when it's nice that Microsoft can just handle it, but you're gonna pay more and what happens if, right? The if scenarios, those are the ones that always wor that worry me. Um, I think that gets through all the questions that, uh, there's a couple I might not have gotten to and I'll, I'll recap after and reach out if there's anyone, but guys, appreciate the time. Great um, discussion in here. I think a lot of questions on this certainly welcome, uh, any feedback of topics or areas that you want to dive deeper into. It sounds like we might want to do a follow up on the prem specific options, which uh, I would welcome that. Um, and we can talk through and architect what those look like, but thank you for the time. As always, appreciate you spending some of your day with me. Hope you had a, hope you had a good time with us and have a good rest of your day.